All right, guys. Welcome to the very first episode of Alien Murder Sex. I am Lauren Petrie. I'm a stand up comic, a former autopsy technician, and drug addict and sex worker. And oh, she is joined by me, Adrian Cuss. Some of you can call me Kiss. I am a hairstylist, and uh, you know, I run my own little salon. And you know, we'll talk about that and all the branding and all the gratuitous self plugging later. But uh, yeah. Hairstylist and punk rocker and all around neighborhood. You're in a band. Guy. I'm in a band. What the fuck, dude? I'm in a band. You're it's... in a band called Bedpan Party, and she saw us... Bedpan Fight. Bedpan Fight. And Sometimes she... you think you're going to a show. You're you're actually joining a fight club. It's a fight club, and she saw us guitars and half on stage, and you should catch her when you can. So anyway, uh, this show we're gonna do uh, it's paranormal news. We're gonna do true crime, and uh, we're gonna review a porn at the end of every show. Yay! Yeah. Uh, so that's that's what this is. It's not PC. And speaking of that bullshit, uh, I work my very first corporate job of my entire life right now. We're all very proud of Lauren. I don't know. The, the HR isn't. I am personally very <laughs> proud of Lauren. HR isn't proud. I was after the morgue. I was working on a truck uh, doing like moving with like sweaty European guys. And, and they pulled me off the truck and they're like, we want you to have a corporate position. I was like, are you sure? And now <laughs> now they're not sure. And I, I the greatest mystery is figuring out what it was that I said, because I've said so much, I'm sure. Was it my favorite joke about not being hot enough to rape? Could have been. It could have been that one, because that's my it's favorite. It's a solid joke. It's though. a solid joke. And when people go, oh, you're a comic? Tell me a joke. And I go, okay, it's really offensive. Are you sure? And they go, yeah. <laughs> no, they they couldn't do it. It's fine. I think maybe be more specific with your disclaimer, like, hey, my humor is for mature audiences only, and we are going to discuss rape and drug use. Are you okay with that? Because, I mean, like, right off the cuff, what's the first thing you say when, you know, like, I don't know, man, I got a dark sense of humor. Like, all right, we may go into some dark self-loathing stuff. No, no, no. Somebody might go, like, diet racist. But you Diet don't ex- racist? Diet racist. But what you don't expect to hear are the morgue stories and the sex worker stories. I mean, well, if they know me, but, you know, they get what they ask for. Anyway, I can't. I need a job. So that's why we're another reason we're starting this podcast because I can't work in corporate America anymore. I can't fucking do it. My life has been strip clubs and morgues and uh, one morgue, not plural. Uh, pretty much one strip club, too. I got fired for being too fat. And then, So why not just seize the opportunity and create the strip club morgue? morgue? God okay? damn it, Adrian. Picture it. It's a funeral home. You are greeted by gorgeous cocktail waitresses. You're Damn. weeping on the, uh, over like Uncle Joe and, and not being him. in the will. But you've also got like tits in your face. Tits in your face. Always you know, Christina's you showing you a good time. You know, Trixie's over there. She's got like the double shots. You, your eyes are full of glitter and tears. When I was a stripper, I always, we did have funeral parties come in and they fucking spent so much money. Grief is so Grief good for, money. for fucking pocket. Oh, it's great. Like, the, oh god! If they go to us, if they're the coolest, if they're people that will go to a strip club, you oh take advantage of that strippers. Mm. Get those sympathy dollars, bitches. Sympathy dollars. Yeah, yeah. You can cry in my tits, dollars. I remember I have a I have a friend and he was having a mental breakdown, and no, he was inconsolable. I think someone in his family died, but I'm too much of a bitch to remember who. But he was really. Do you remember why or how? Well, I know he was on mushrooms. He'd had like you know two bottles of Jack, and someone died. But I don't. I think it was probably something boring like cancer. But uh, mm. he was having a breakdown and nobody could get him to stop. And I just looked at him and I screamed his name and showed my like flashed my tits in his face. And he immediately smiled and looked up and went, oh, it's it's, you know, it's just medicine. Flash some tits. It's like it's like hugging a puppy. There's a there's a place. There's a place that works with the place I work at. And it's a hospital. And they wanted art books in the waiting room for people with terminal diseases and so they ordered a bunch of art history books, but then they sent them back because they had nudity. You know. And I was like, if I'm terminally ill and I'm waiting to hear if I'm going to die or not, I want tits. I want to see nothing but tits. Thank you. I want to see tits. I want them covered with whatever. I don't even care it's what they're It's Renaissance covered in. art. It's not. How bad could it be? Anyway, we have a different sensibility, I guess, than most people. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. People, people, people End of suck. life, just nonstop, just stream me National Geographic. Just you want the hanging titties? Sometimes you need some hangy titties. <laughs> I don't. 
<laughs> I don't. But You've never thought about being humbled by like a uh, hanging titty oh, slap. I'm, I'm humbled and I'm saving up for plastic surgery if anything ever gets like that. I'm not that body positive. Look, I, mean, I can't masturbate to African bush people. with very tiny titties. I am, you know, oh. on the itty bitty titty committee. Like I'm there. I pay my dues. I, you know, I keep minutes at every meeting. And so I think about these things. Like, what would it be like to be hit with different titties? Like, is that just me? Like, I just kind of think about like it's. I don't. I don't have them. I can't. I can't even hit my sweaty in the face. It's, you with have my to, titty. You have to put like, paper towels under your tits in the summer. It's not worth it. I don't. I don't suggest it. I don't agree with it. See, but, um, but I'll never I'm, know. I'm upset about it often. Like when I get old, these things are just gonna hollow out. You know what I mean? They're You're lucky. Be like, mm. You're lucky. That's it. You're lucky. But if they got like droopy, you could like roll them up. You like tuck them a little. You know, you could just. I don't know. I, do you think about your labia in this way? Sometimes. Sometimes. Be- like we were talking before we went on about how uh, is how you pack your suitcase relevant to what your labia looks like? Like, and I want to know. Like, I am such a meticulous packer. I'm very oh, organized. Wow. You've been in my salon. You see how I run my, my business in my home and I'm just very meticulously organized. This is the way I pack as well. Um, so I can then assume that you have a very clean box that's trimmed up and it's just like titty, like itty bitty and perfect and all folded it's, in. It's a magical place. The linens are ironed. My rec room is like, it's pristine. You know, it's that '70s basement. You go and hang well, out. That in and sounds it's like brightly sh- colored. That sounds like shag carpeting. Well, you got to have a little shag to accent the room. You know, you got to accent the whole room. Okay, it's important. You got a chandelier in there. It's classy. You know what I mean? Your pussy is is a, a euphemism for a classy chandelier '70s party. I like it. Yeah, I, I would go. I, do, I would it, do coke in your pussy. Would you, though? I'm sober, but if I still did coke, I would. If I still did coke, I I might be preferable to do coke off, say, say my, but, but I'll never get there. I'll never know. Oh, God, I've been smoking cigarettes. And it makes me want to do blow so bad. I'm not going to do it. Not going to do it. Five years sober, you guys. Speaking of labia. Yeah, what? Speaking of labia. we oh. I found this amazing point. I, I haven't actually watched it, but the thumbnail got me. It Got me. Whoever put together this thumbnail knew exactly what they were doing because I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, I kind of want to like watch Space Jam and eat Arby's and watch this. That's disgusting. Well, do you remember? You remember the 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 story about the frat boys that had fried chicken parties while they watched porn, and that was like a I thing. Don't remember this, but I just the greasy but, fingers dripping fucking sweat and every. I mean, like, can you hold like a chicken wing in one hand and be like flapping with the other? Like, do you I use think, the grease as lubrication? Are you yes. high fiving the chicken grease and bodily fluids? I How th- much bodily fluids? Like, once you've, does everybody get an individual bucket of chicken? Like, <laughs> so that like I'm just wondering, like, because if you're not a double dip person, if you're not okay with me dunking my chicken nugget twice, you're probably not okay with me taking my like. Greasy freaking, chicken fucking right. Meaty you don't paws. want my pussy juice in your chicken. The community chicken, <laughs> <laughs> or do you? I just want to know like how these parties go down. And these who are, decides these rules? These are straight conservative boys, so maybe uh, I doth say the men protest too much. Maybe. Hmm. 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 Mm. Uh, all that talk about greasy chicken though just made me think of this case in the morgue. Uh, mm. So. This is one of my favorite cases, and I'll probably like I probably shouldn't even be telling this story on the first episode, but fuck it. Um, hook, line, and sinker. Hook, line, and sinker. New York City, 2020. We thought the world was ending, and there were so many weird deaths in the morgue. It got really for a while. It was just ODs. It was just ODs. ODs. Ju- fucking COVID. COVID got so fucking boring. It was like oh, the sixth COVID body this week. Like nah. that was a sl- that's when it got better. But um, really memorable death. A guy died by himself masturbating in his room. Okay. Uh. He had one dildo up his ass and one dildo down his throat and two shirts soaked in amyl nitrate wrapped around his face. Oh. Right. And the thing is, he had roommates, but somehow the body got left in the room for like two weeks. Well, maybe he had COVID and they isolated him. No, those were just the best roommates ever. Those are some pretty good roommates. <laughs> Those are the best roommates ever. And they brought him in, and, and you can see, like, on the table, there's a dildo up his butt and in his mouth. It's, like, protruding from what the body bag. What kind of dildo was it, it that was, was specifically really in his ass? Big, boring uh, pink one. Super boring, but really long. Like silicone? It was silicone? Rubber. Though? Rubber? Mm. Rubber, flexible, bendy. Okay. Bendy? Yeah. yeah. So he unzipped, and the doctor I was working with 
lost his shit. He was really a uh, very English overweight doctor if I can paint a picture I'm not trying to be mean to him he's a great guy but like he was laughing so hard I immediately thought of like Buster for Jones like James <laughs> Gordon from uh the movie Cats like older. that's okay older, older. <laughs> well, I'm still imagining it as a, like he's a proper British gentleman cat with a top hat in the morning so go on <laughs> he kind of sounded like that and uh, he was like oh this is splendid <laughs> <laughs> I love sex crime. Like, it's not crime. This was, like, obviously an accident. You know, he didn't, like, do this on purpose. But the body is crawling with maggots. Right. Like, like visibly, you can see it moving. It, it's like, and it's like, like the body cavity is like, moving. You ever did enough mushrooms where you look at shit and it just moves? It was like that. The whole body, the skin is just, like, rippling with maggots under it. Okay. Got it. Got and. It. He's like, well, you know, we have to take the dildo out to see exactly where it cut the airwave off. Oh, like, what was the dildo down his throat like? Was it another rubber? It was a, like a light purple, if I remember right, hmm. with teeth marks in it. And that's what he was trying to, he was trying to match the teeth marks up to the teeth. Yeah. To see exactly, so for like, the you know, the very medical clinical report of exactly where the foreign object cut the airwave off for the family. It's important for the family to know that apparently. So... <laughs> I just need to know, I just need to know. how deep my son could <laughs> deep throat a dildo. <laughs> Let his death not be a I mean, if he had a family, he was a decomp. So mm. what does that tell you? No friends, no family. That Somebody's just taking it to the limit, masturbating alone in a fucking closet with shirts wrapped and amyl nitrate wrapped. Look, we all did weird things during COVID. Quarantine, am I right? Yeah. Dude. We're different people now. Yeah, we, uh, yeah, we are. Uh, I got married and that was crazy, but I'm fucking more than ever. But so I'm I'm taking the dildo and I'm like, you know, I'm basically face fucking this guy with a dildo, but clinically right. measuring tape and everything, measuring rule with a measuring stick, just just in and out. And I'm thinking like, how did I fucking get here? This is a weird day. Just face fucking this corpse for a job on the clock, clinical, not supposed to laugh. And then when I took the dildo out of his ass, I'm not kidding. Like at least a pound of maggots fell on the floor, just blah. And there's you, you just have to pour like powdered bleach all over them and sweep them up and put them in the trash. They don't die. They come up the drain. So when you talk about greasy chicken shit, and I, I, the texture of his skin was like brown and slimy with all of this. Mm-hmm. Just rem- any, like there's certain foods now that I uh, I avoid after working in the morgue. Now I'm gonna take this little bit of information that I have now about you and circle back. Let's go back to strip club funeral home morgue, mm-hmm. like dying wishes. Dying wishes, like if your dying wish is to just be buried with a big old dildo in your ass, like, you know, it's like a 12 inch, like big old mm-hmm. monster cock. Like, is that a service we additionally <laughs> offer for extra money? I would offer that service. Excellent. Excellent. OK, I'm well, just are we, sure we should that, like, start put together this business plan. Okay, we, we should start a sex worker funeral home. <laughs> Look at all the jobs we'll create. <laughs> That's what it's really about. That's helping the really economy, about. not our own sick, twisted desires. <sighs> Who can afford their own sick Who can desires aff- in this economy? In this economy. Hey, that's my punchline. Eh. <laughs> so a joke I'm not telling right now. Um, okay, so I believe in aliens. I also believe in aliens. If you guys want to look up some really fun, uh, crazy shit. So there's a guy in Hoboken that believes he lost his virginity to an alien. And he paints pictures of uh, his alien sex. I'm looking. And they at are beautiful. I don't know if I should say his name. I want to try to get him on to do an interview because he's close. Um, you could probably just Google uh, alien sex art and find him. Alien sex art. Yeah, he, there's a documentary about him right now, and I don't want to like, alien virginity. Yeah, I don't want to copyright infringe, but it's it's fascinating, and he's so believable. I mean, he really fell in love with these creatures, and he like he he thinks they love him more than most guys think their girlfriend loves him. Like he's into it, which also makes me think he might just be making this shit up. But um, I I do believe in aliens, and I I the thing that struck me about the pandemic the most with the whole UFO thing was that the government actually came out and they said. Yeah, uh, for the first time, we don't know what this shit is and we can't control it, which is a huge admission for, you know, a, a fucking international power to admit that, like, we we don't know what this is and, you know, it, this could hurt us and we don't have a defense against it. Right. For 50 fucking years, they've been threatening witnesses, the witnesses from Roswell, destroying families over witnesses coming forward, threatening people's careers. And suddenly they're just like, oh, yeah, it's cool. We don't know what the fuck it is. No. No, you had your chance, government. You had your chance. And, uh, we had a date at Area 51. <laughs> we, 
We this showed up. That was Where after were you? that. This they call it now. They call it uh, unidentified aerial phenomenon, and they oh, have a I task force. Phenomenon. You like you apps or whatever. And it, it, do it was, they work with or against Space Force? Like, is oh. this like an FBI <laughs> CIA versus agency kind I of hope, deal? Or I th- it must be because the CIA is fucking rotten to the core. But the thing that struck me was like. For I was such an X Files fan growing up, and I was just so I just wanted the truth, and the truth came. They're the like, truth came. They're like, yeah, these things have been visiting us. We and they they haven't admitted to recovered craft, but they're they're just really close to admitting that they've been reverse engineering it. They come out and they're like, yeah, we have this shit. Nobody gave a shit. We don't care. No, everyone's like, oh yeah, aliens, cool. Uh, uh, COVID. I got a lot of shit going on and I can't afford rent. So like nobody, they, the government for years thought that the world couldn't handle it and people were going to like freak out. Fly and mass hysteria. mass hysteria. We're not alone in the universe. Oh no. Oh, religion will crumble. Uh, newsflash, religion already fucking crumbled. Uh, and it was going to be like War of the Worlds and people would fight in the street. All that happened is people went, oh cool, what's on Netflix? Mm. Nobody gave a shit. And it was heartbreaking for me because I I'd waited so long and I was like, but nope, nope, nobody, nobody cares. Nobody cares. They just they said there's, there's aliens. Nobody, nobody cares. So there's aliens. We had just come off the Tiger King ride. And now there's aliens. Like, we were like, <laughs> we were burned out on on you know, uh, gay meth tiger cult. That's not. We were, we that's were not what the aliens are. <laughs> when the aliens came around, it was like I just. I don't even. Show what do me, I do with this? Show me the alien race that's a gay meth tiger cult. There's the Pleiadians, there's the reptilians, there's the Greys, but I haven't heard of gay meth tiger cults. Maybe the reptilians. I mean, the reptilians are supposed to be pretty evil. Uh, they might have tiger cults. I would fuck a reptilian because it's inter- like giant double sided lizard dick. I mean, I'd do it. I would do it just for the. I mean, the split tongue alone has me sold. I would do it for the species. They're already here, Adrian. Oh, and I just haven't. I just haven't. They are already like doing gene splicing, and hi- there's already alien hybrids walking around among oh, us. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. They're already here. Look up Doctor David Jacobs if you guys want to get freaked out about all his regression hypnosis on people that say that they've been abducted and all this like sexual experiments and how they've all had like a million like you know twenty five alien babies and some of them look human, some of them don't. They they're in their dreams and they they love them but they don't and. It's fucking crazy, and I just don't think everyone's lying about having fucking alien babies. It's and it doesn't do anything good for your life. Like people just you get ostracized and you lose your job. It's not like a thing you want to talk about. So I don't think they're all lying. I don't think they're lying. Yeah, I think they're having fucking alien babies. I mean, at the very least, like I believe that they believe, and I want to believe. Look at Gigi Hadid. D- right this moment, you want me to do no, that? No, no, like she everybody, might, she might be an alien. I don't know. She might be. She very well. I mean, I don't know. I could roll with that. I could roll with that. Uh, so what, what's good in true crime? What's good in true crime? All right, check this out. <sighs> we were we weren't ready for aliens when they told us that, but I was ready to believe that al- that uh, elephants are in fact Sentient? murderous. Oh, I was gonna I thought you were gonna say like pachyderms are the most caring and generous and loving of all the animals. No, I mean, elephants have been going to war for centuries at some point. Against the human race? Had, well, they had to have picked up murderous tendencies. I mean, right? we deserve it. We've been taking their tusks and, and slaughtering them. Facts. And, yeah, they're super... They go to funerals. They go and they find the bones of the other elephants and they, like, play with them and with their trunk and they pick up the bones of the dead. It's it's a little morbid elephants. You pick it up dead They're just dead big relatives. old goths. They're just big goths. They elephants are, are goths. They are nature's goths. <laughs> elephants are but goths. But they're like... They're becoming like the angry goth at the show. You know what I mean? Okay. I know what story you're talking about. Yeah. 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 So we came across this story. Elephant kills old woman, then returns to trample her corpse at the funeral. <laughs> and I'm just like, revenge elephants. What? But he didn't come back alone. All right. No, he came back with the herd. He came back. Check it out. So um, this lady. I love that we're calling this true crime and it's just an act of nature. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. But then again. Then again, we could call it an act of nature because, okay, they are not humans. But if we're going to say like an alien or an alien, I'm still talking about it. Elephants are aliens. Um, <laughs> Maybe they are. Elephants being sentient creatures, would this not be a crime? I mean, I, I 
this is going to be a controversial hot take statement from Lauren. I believe that murder should probably be legal, not in all occasions, but like if it's a eye for an eye situation, I think that murder is natural and part of the natural order of things and in some cases should not be penalized. There I said it. But then who gets to make that decision? As, <laughs> I know, know people like, are a mess. We're like we're, our brains. I've taken so many brains out of people's skulls, and it's like tapioca fat pudding. And you look at the this jelly in your hands. You're like, this thing made decisions. This thing actually like it's like pudding. It's sentient pudding sentient of fat pudding. It's, electric pudding. It's electric pudding. It's electric. It's gross. And you're just like, this that's a good porn name. Electric pudding. Electric pudding. I got the idea from a corpse. I'm just thinking of all those nice squishy sounds. And <laughs> a little bit of zap zap. It has to be, that's a lesbian born for yeah, sure. Yeah, a little bit of, you know, electro play, a little. You're into little the electro like play. That. I'm you know, scared of the electro play. But I, I respect and I will take that I mean, adventure. I'm afraid of heights. You are? Yeah. Huh, but I don't want to, f- I'm not scared of heights, but I don't want to fuck a pie. But no, I don't, I'm just I don't, trying to think, like, what, what things do I have trepidations about? And it's like, I don't want to get electrocuted while I come. I don't want that. Have you tried? No. So how do you know? So do you want to do this sometime? <laughs> sometime within a safe environment? Yeah. yeah. You know what? I can I can do that for you. I, I like, can do that with you. I can do that near you. I, I like getting cut while I come. Okay. And like while you come? Or I like, like to get, uh, is it like part of the foreplay? Lead, foreplay leading up. I like so it. So it's not like you you want to be cut like right when you climax. Like No, no, no. Because I, I then I can't focus on it. Like. You know, I can't really focus on anything. You can't but... do like the double release. Dude, kind of I can't even like read a paragraph and have a conversation. I cannot come and do another activity. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. You're you're talented. I'm just well, I'm just wondering. I would I'm, s- cur- I'm just trying to work out. And this is this is my role here, I think. Uh, is to just work out the logistics of things. I just want to make sure everybody's so the on the next same orgy. page. We're painting <laughs> a vivid picture for our audience, you know. Of who we are and what we're talking about, and you know, I mean, how do you get that dildo up your ass and down your throat at the you same time? I mean? At the same well, without dying while was being he safe. suspended at any point? No, no. Okay. Now I didn't pick the body up that time. I okay. just I was just there for the autopsy. Oh, okay. And okay. it's it was it was amazing. Um. Anyway, god damn it. Back to the fucking elephant. All right. So, so no, out. but think about yeah. the the forethought of this elephant what did the woman do to the elephant what was she just like well hey, and was that's this, wait, was thing, this that's where the story africa or india so we are in where are we i don't know like even what day it is Con- what continent this is. was this on because there's there's african elephants which have bigger tusks and there's indian elephants which have smaller ears uh i mean i think it's rude that the article doesn't s- doesn't even tell us what continent the the fucking elephant murder happened on well, whatever, whatever the fuck it happened. The, the most interesting part to me is that the elephant went back. It was like I Ray fu- Paul Village is is what it says. So if you want to Google Map that, that sounds that sounds like India to me. That sounds like because India. That to sounds me. like British colonizers named that village. Odisha, yeah. So it sounds. Yeah, I think we're dealing. We're, we're working with some Indian so elephants. So what here. the fuck did this? Wow, like the elephant. So might- she's like down by a watering hole. She's like gathering water or talking shit to elephants. She might have been talking shit to. But you see, and that's. That's where it's like, you know, this is only told from our side. Right. She could have been she could have been throwing rocks. You never know. For all we know. And that's why he went back. She could have so- been wearing some ivory. Like, I don't know. <laughs> What's up? And then the elephant then he fucking tramples her to death. Tramples her ass. Which by the way, a trampling death is not a nice, fun, slow like it's not a good death. That's a bad death. It's trampled to death. And then people are having a funeral for her, and the elephant comes back and he's like, I'm not done with you, bitch. He comes back. And he comes back with the elephant herd. So they trample. He brought his friends. He brought his friends. And his family. To trample the entire village. <laughs> the village. I wish that we had some kind he, of. That div- elephant was like, fuck you, lady, and your people. <laughs> fuck this village. I don't like it. And then, like, the whole time they're trampling, this elephant is aware of where her body is. Like, the whole freaking time. Wait, it tra- they trampled other people in the village, too. Yeah. Oh my dwellings. god! But this elephant kept going back to her. Wow, just her. Wow, elephants never forget. What the fuck? I wish we could talk to the elephants and really get their fucking side of it. Okay, so so hear me out on this because here was a whole thought I was having. She fucking deserved right? it. Um, because you know I get I get down with some like ancient astronaut theorist shit, right? I can debunk okay. a bunch of that right now, but go ahead. But okay, all right. So we've got this murderous elephant. 
let's look at mythology. Let's look at uh, 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 Geshna. Mm -hmm. You know, we have this elephant deity. Yes. Prominent in India. Yes. Right. You also have Baphomet. You know what I mean? I know what Baphomet is. So what's to say, like, that this, maybe this elephant received some sort of, like, just... You know what I mean? Like there's there's something more Some to it. Past something life. like in its DNA, or maybe it was it was it was embodying like behemoth or something. It was just like I don't fuck know this village. Like I, I don't know. Like I'm kind of like, but but what I think? That, why would an ele- like? It's so specific. It's very specific. I think that woman. I think it's more simple than that. I think that you're a kind, empathetic person, and you're you're thinking about it too deep. I think that woman like threw a rock at an elephant, and that elephant was like, not today. This is but not then the why day. the whole village? Because then he went back and he was like, I'm pissed and your like, elephants stick together. This is true. And he was like, hey, I'm really upset and I just killed this fucking dumb ape. Come help me kill more dumb apes. And they were like, ape killing? Let's go. Let's go do some ape killing. Let's go do some ape killing. Hmm. Yeah, we're just we're just primates. We are just yeah. primates. Yeah, and, and uh, we do all kinds of primate shit. I mean, okay. You know about the school shooting, very sad, Texas. Uh, I wish school shootings would stop. But, you know, like the cops didn't go in. They didn't do shit. They didn't do it. Uh, and it really reminded me, though. So you guys know Amityville. Amityville Horror. Mm-hmm. The famous story about the house that's haunted. The family moves in and like, there's blood coming from the walls. All the the boo factory haunted house shit that happens. Spooky. Spooky. The real story is that the family that lived there before... Uh, they the son was dealing heroin with the mob, and he was uh, selling it out the back through a speedboat, like on the river. Right. I'm not sure of all the ins and outs of it, but he was super fucked up on drugs. He had a bad relationship with his dad, and pretty much him and the sister desi- decided to murder the whole family. Now, the night that it happened, the DEA was st- staked out outside the house, right? Because they were already there to do like a massive drug bust, and they heard. It's like, I think, I believe, I might be wrong. Someone will email me. I believe it was five people that were killed. They heard five shotguns go off. The DA did nothing. They just sat there. Shots fired. They They were were like, like, oh, I didn't put a lid on my coffee. I can't. I I think, I'll tell you what I think they thought. This is connected to a thing that happened at the morgue. There was a drug house and there was a murder-suicide of like four people. And again, the cops were outside while it was happening. They heard the whole thing. Right. They don't go in or try to stop. Their response that I heard third hand through a detective was, well, by that time, there was no one to arrest. (laughs) So am I? (laughs) I'm going to ask a logistical question. I'm not sure you have the answer to. Is it less paperwork to arrest someone and press charges or is it less paperwork to remove a body and just send it to the morgue? Uh, depending on the circumstances, they are both a lot of paperwork. I mean, if it depends how the body, I mean, what's the death scene? If the death scene is just obviously someone died of an illness and the family's there, it's like barely, any, I mean, there's paperwork, but it's barely anything. You know, right. The but in, in like the, the instance if it's a of crime, specifically a shootout. Yeah, no, right. that's so much fucking paperwork. So I have a, I'm not trying to shamelessly plug, but I'm writing, I've written a cartoon about serial killers that get brought back to life and live together. And there's a scene I wrote where Ted Bundy gets caught just, like, throwing bodies into the trunk of his car. The cop walks up, and he sees, like, how many bodies it is, and he just goes, you know what? That's too much paperwork. You have a good night. Like, yep. I, I'm not doing this. No, I'm just I'm just wondering, like, what, what dictates that? Is it, is it, like, on a bureaucratical level? Dude, the, the stuff I learned about the bureaucratic nature of death was fascinating and uh, mind-numbing at the same time. Like... In New York, pretty much everyone gets an autopsy, no matter what, unless your family objects or it's just obvious you died because you were 90. And even then, sometimes they bring him in. I'm like, why are we fucking flaying this fucking 90-year-old grandma? I think time did it, don't you think? And they still cut him open. They want to see exactly like where the heart valve failed or what the build plaque buildup was or whatever. It's, it's grotesque, man, but it was so fucking cool at the same time. Mm. Uh, but wait, what was your question? <laughs> I like already what 
Uh, uh, oh, the, the, the bureaucratic nature. Like, why nature. make that decision? Why make the decision to sit outside when shots oh. are fired? Or is it one of those, like, we Pussies. don't want to endanger... I don't, listen, I don't hate all cops. Let me say that. There's some really good people that do it for the right reasons, and I've met some of them. But, I mean, if I signed up for that job, I, I would assume that risk and I would be somebody that would like probably do something dumb some hero shit and go into the face of danger I'm assuming that the kind of person that signs up to be a cop would want a situation where they could have some valor or something I don't know I mean but just to sit there I guess if they don't have the right equipment I mean I'm not going to start making I don't, what I'm equipment not, do you need to take down a gunman an AR-15 All right. automatic weapons great you know, when COVID hit, I almost bought a gun. You know, I think we all had the same idea <laughs> that it was like, am I about to, am I about to just smuggle arms did you across worry state lines? About, and... Did you worry about your business and like, like looters or? What? Yeah. I was like, you know, it was Queens. Oh yeah. You, you know? were in a, you were a salon in Queens. Right. Well, I didn't, when it all started, you know, that was before I even worked uh, from home. Yeah. Before I had even started working from home because I was, um, at first uh, furloughed from my previous salon company um, and then the salon shut down and it was you know it, it was a whole thing so um, but before I had made that decision to go into business for myself from home no there was this concern of like what is going to happen and how intense is it going to get and do I need to be ready at the top of my stairs already like pow, pow, yeah. or do we go this home alone style or do we like <laughs> you know do we pack up what we can and put our backs to the ocean like planet terror style like we, you know which which horror movie route are we gonna go and, and now we're all just going to our dumb jobs on the subway again and nobody it's like it's i feel like i got i don't i don't know it feels like a big uh, mirage like now it feels like it almost never happened and in that time period so i was fucked when COVID happened because i had been in a bad relationship i'd been in a really bad place and i'd been escorting to get out of a bed bed apartment with a guy that was abusive and i had been escorting and i hadn't had like a job that wasn't an i-9 job or an off the books escort job right so i couldn't get any of that sweet enhanced unemployment oh, money that's sweet on employment and i was just like i was at the i just got into a new place and i was like i'm gonna go get a regular job and be a good girl and then boom can't the world Fire. The world fucking ended, and I had a very extreme reaction. I bought like three hundred dollars of camping equipment off of Amazon on credit, and I was like, "I'm gonna have to. The food chain's gonna break down, and I'm gonna have to go kill squirrels in the woods with a fucking slingshot." And I'm, I was like, about to go to Philadelphia to buy a gun, and then I was like, "Oh, oh, oh no! I just have to go work at the hospital and put bodies in the trucks, and I can make rent. Great, just do what no one else wants to do." It was an adventure. But how concerned were you that, like, you were going to have to <sighs> defend yourself at some point? I was. In, in I was. the breakdown of society. <laughs> On the bus to uh, to Kings County Hospital, that commute terrified me. Because it was right when they're, like, you know, six feet apart. Everyone was staying inside. Every, the New York was completely different. It was terrified. And I'm packed into, like, this fucking city bus. We're all just, like, sardines. And everyone's looking around, like... Is this how I go? Is this how I go? Exactly. Exactly. And, and the sad part is, is like it's all people just trying to get to their jobs because they were forced to work because it's a class war and they weren't rich enough not to work. So like all the peasants get to die. Oh, yeah. And that yes, was the feeling. Peasants. And that's how I felt. I felt like I am definitely in the feudal class, obviously, because I'm on I'm on the death fucking bus. And then, you know, like death bus, death bus. It was a death bus. I didn't die. I got COVID like three times, but I didn't die. I'm fine. Ain't found a way to kill you yet. I swear. <sighs> I swear. It will be cigarettes. It might be murder. We haven't. Okay, so we we haven't really discussed um, a true true crime yet. We just discussed a natural order of the world, <laughs> just <laughs> elephants uh, being elephants dicks seeking. No, I revenge. think I think the elephant was in the right. I'm gonna I'm gonna side with the elephant. I'm gonna say this may be the beginning of a uh, human animal gang wars. <laughs> oh, did you hear about the story about the monkeys that were killing everyone's dogs in a in a city in India? I'm sorry, what? Yeah, we're still in India. This, yeah, <laughs> India, animals in India what for some is reason. Going on? So this was a oh, this was a while ago, but there was a I, I have to relook at the article, but there was some situation where like a dog 
stole food from a monkey repeatedly or like right. pissed him off. And then the monkeys were like, no, that's fucking it. This is fucking dog war. And they, they slaughtered like every dog in the, in the little village. The monkeys just, they fucking organized and they killed all the dogs. Even the good boys? Yeah, they killed all of them. Oh. Yeah. So there's some animal shit going on in there's, India. There's some animal yeah. shit going on. There's animal unions maybe. They're all organizing. Are they? Or- oh. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That is a whole other level of sentient. Like when you get to the level, you're like, hang on, we got to organize. Mm-hmm. We want weekends off. We're only doing this we want, elephant thing 50 hours a week. We want all the dogs dead. We want all the dogs dead. And somebody deal with with, <laughs> with the apes. But the, the monkeys didn't go back and like during the funeral and trample the body again to be like extra fuck you well i don't know has there been a follow-up story no, like, <laughs> what happened to the dogs did they burn the dogs did they bury the dogs no, they, did the monkeys go back and dig up the dogs they went ham on the monkeys they just like tore them apart wait the people went ham no, on no, the monkeys no, no. the monkeys went i mean i'm sorry my mistake the monkeys went ham on the dogs and they tore the, they tore the dogs apart like they went like literal ape shit anyway so talk <laughs> I mean, I wish I could. I wish there would. I go to a. I, was, I don't want name it. There's a couple of subreddits I go for to get my gore fix still. because right. I miss it, and uh, I do see some really grotesque stuff, and some of them are primate attacks, and uh, that that helps me wake up in the morning. Mm, really gets you going to just see a whole face torn off. Actually, yeah, because my job is so monotonous right now that it's like, huh. Well, hey, at least that's not happening right now. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. cartel. Uh, live autopsies and they cut people open and you can see like their hearts still beating and intestines. I mean, I there's just something about it that uh, makes me feel good because it's not happening to me and it makes me more grateful and thankful for things. And, I, and I'm a complete atheist, so this is what I have. It's a bit of shite in Florida. Yeah. 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 I respect that. Oh, thank you. You know, whatever gets you... Whatever pairs well with your coffee, <laughs> I'm here for I'm here for. Okay, so this woman. Oh, okay. We we got to talk about this woman. Um, you're married. Have you thought about killing your husband? Sure. I mean, I'm not, not. I love him, but like, I've thought of. I'll put it like this. I haven't thought about killing him, but I have. Adrian, you know me. I've right. absolutely planned out multiple people's murders that I'll never commit. Because How would you kill me? I haven't planned your murder. Is that? Is that like a love thing, or do you just do you not love me you enough? Haven't, you haven't upset me to think you haven't upset, about you don't upset me in a way that I would think. There are people I work with that I've I've fantasized about, and just as a disclaimer for my future lawyer, uh, I just want to say that like this is all fantasy, and I am too smart to ever fucking do anything like this because I know I would get caught, and I watch enough forensic files to know that fucking hair and fibers always get you fucking gone, and the science is only getting better and better, so don't think about it. Just masturbate about killing people. Don't actually fucking do it, because you're just the best revenge is to live a happy life and to be successful and, and watch them all fucking scowl at your success, so don't don't do it, but God, I do fantasize about fucking squishing some people's brains in while they... Anyway, Adrian, so, like, that I'm is a your nice... preferred method? Like, are we talking like I you're going crush... for eyeballs, you're going for like skull crushing? Depends, depends what they did. Are there boots involved? No, is this I a bare would... hands deal? Like, the worst death I've imagined? The worst death you've imagined? You would... don't have to tell me who... No, no, no I, I, I won't tell you who, but okay. it would be dosing someone with acid really high. Okay torturing them a little bit but then dipping them in a vat of acid while they're high on acid like uh, hyd- like acid the drug and then like acid to peel their skin off while they're slowly while they're alive and bleach their eyeballs so i'm a happy nice person and i'm fine like this is this is your coping mechanism <laughs> i guess it's one of them is is fantasizing about wow uh, who is our murder. fan base gonna deep god damn it um wow whoever's still listening uh thank you <laughs> you might, sorry i don't know what you thought you came here for um, i'm not even sure i knew what i came here for but you know what i'm getting it right i'm getting what i need i think i think i think um <laughs> i have good news for you lauren you're not the first person who has thought about killing and, another person right and and meticulously plotted it was it and interesting about though? the details was, was her was her plan so here in- we go so um i don't know if you guys have seen this yet you know we've got this this woman, she's a author, and she kills her chef husband. Um, but Did she, she kinda, cook him? 
Well, he was the chef. Yeah, but she should have cooked. It would, that would have been I ironic. don't believe she did. Yeah, she wasn't I very do creative. Not, it, that would have been great. Yeah. That would have been great. Like, how do you get rid of a body? Well, you, know, I mean, you got a crock you gotta pot. Have, you got to have a theme for a successful murder. She didn't even have a theme. She didn't really have a theme, but what she wait, wait, did so have. She wrote a book. She didn't write a book. She didn't write a book. Oh. Okay. She she wrote an essay. She, she What is she, in fucking third grade? I mean... <laughs> Yo, if I could write this kind of essay in third grade, I mean, it's it's not a particularly great essay, but you know, let's, let's go for it. You want to read some of it? I, I want to. Okay. Like, like, how do you write about killing your husband and then kill your husband? Like, well, you, you, your IQ can't be that high. Can't be that high. Can't be that high. Uh, as a romantic suspense writer, I spend a lot of time thinking about murder and consequently about police procedure. Apparently, you didn't. Think hard. Yeah, enough. you didn't watch enough about DNA profiling. You, wow. After all, if the murder is supposed to set me free, I certainly don't want to spend any time in jail. And let me say clearly for the record, I don't like jumpsuits and orange isn't my color. So this sounds like the kind of bitch that goes to church and then like yells at the wait staff and is like a total Karen. Oh, totally. Totally. And she thinks that she's being like so these overtures of of like romance and and she thinks she's really deep and and interesting and she's really She's not. just Karen. Karen Nancy Brophy. That's really her name? No, but we're going <laughs> to <laughs> We're going to roll with it. All right, Nancy. She first lists the motives, okay. She killing. listed her motive. She, well, she lists five different. And motives. She didn't try insanity, so she's obviously never like watched a police procedural. Because maybe you can get off on the sanity, but like, well, this is this is still the essay she wrote oh, way God. before she killed her husband. So she's got five different motives: financial, uh, lying, cheating, bastard. Very well, well put. I mean. She's okay. not creative. No, she's not. Fell in love with someone else. I thought your feet were a cat for a minute. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> fell in love with someone else. Abuser, it's your profession. And I like, I would, <laughs> I'd like to think if I, you know, killed someone, like, you know, it would, it would have to be my profession, at least from then on forward. You know what I mean? Because if I've thought enough to murder somebody, I'm going to make a job of it. And you got to, you know what I mean? Yeah. I used to fantasize about being a hitman, um, hit woman, whatever, hit dude. I, I, you know, I think we all fantasize about it, but I settled on, I think what I really wanted to be was like a Bond girl, like a Gal Friday, like a honeypot, a, honey a sexy honeypot, you know, a diversion tactic. I'll give you those CIA secrets right here in my meaty fucking Arby's labia. Mm. I'm not saying you have Arby's labia. I'm sorry. I, I'm not. No. Well, I didn't get that, but okay. I do love Arby's, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm a disgusting human being. Like, I go for that, like, Max sandwich and cram it in my face in under two minutes. Yeah, baby, you want to see me eat? You fucking eat um, that fucking sandwich. But that sandwich. does not reflect my uh, rec room. So, um... I love how you call your pussy your rec room. Uh, my rec room. I love yeah. that. You want to come... Yeah, uh, roll out the pink carpet. You want to come do some exercise in my rec room? <laughs> it's, it's you know, an entertainment area. <laughs> um... You know, sometimes you can roll out the yoga mats. You get you get a workout. You get some stretching. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then she, <laughs> I stretch before sex. I'm that old. I, you know, I think that's just solid <laughs> advice. Like, yeah, anything that's going to get your heart rate up, give it a stretch. Yeah, I mean, I'm 39, and I have definitely, I've, I have definitely have stretched before sex with my husband. Oh, that's so wholesome. Aww. Aww. <laughs> Um, so options to consider then she goes on with some murder weapons um she's listing all this shit out now she lists the, the she's first a one she lists idiot. is a gun and if, if you look at this this case she shot him twice in the chest so the first one you lift you listed is the one you went with after you were a snarky bitch about it being I'm, like they're loud messy requires some skill it takes 10 shots for the sucker to die either you have a terrible aim or he's on drugs i'm like okay oh. i'm i'm sorry i thought this was going to be an interesting story but i hate this lady i don't she's really boring she's not she's like Mm, I, I'm intrigued by her. Just the sheer audacity. The audacity of, her. of like, I love the audacity of her, and that's why I like this case and why I like looking at it. She's just because gonna it's say like, just this so is... freaking of like, who, who gave you this confidence? Like, I, even, this is how I would do it, and then do it. Like, or like, she lists one of her her murder weapons or method would be hiring a hitman. Like, <laughs> that's a 
little classes, Karen. Like, we all can't <laughs> afford hit men. Or then she's like hiring a lover. Wait, that's that's really funny, Adrian. We all can't afford. Who do you think af- you are? I can't can afford, afford a, a hitman. Hit no, we do our murders ourselves with our bare, bare hands. hands. Because okay? we can't afford a gun. We don't get tipped. Even if I could afford a gun, here's the thing. You know what? Like, like the 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 license and the filing in New York would the be bureaucrat- it's a no, nightmare. You go buy your gun in Philadelphia, like a real New Yorker. You bring it back illegally. You file off the serial number, and you do your own murders. You, you don't do your own murders. Yeah, you like a you real don't hire American a man. Hire a hitman. Who the fuck do you think you are, you classist bitch? I mean, unless you're giving a job to a veteran. Okay, and then I do support that. <laughs> I do. So- if you're going to hire your hitman, you know, go find them at um at you know your Knights of <laughs> Listen, Columbus Adrian. at your at your veteran. Clubs I'm, at I'm, your... I'm a very empathetic. Check out the VFW. I, I know that he, like the guys in front of Home Depot need work, but I'm not going to trust them all to hit a mark. Have you seen? I mean, they look well, they're those, drunk. No, not no, because they, not all of them. I mean, are you hiding the body? Are you burying the body? Uh, are you going to encase the body in concrete? I'm not. What is the, I'm not Jimmy Hoffa's murderers. And in which case, like, if that was the method, if I was going to like bury a body in like a cement patio situation you know kind of mm. deal or like build a gazebo on top of it you know like oh. American Horror Story style yeah. you know what I mean like if I was going to do that like would I hire people to do the construction <laughs> or this would I a- be like hey let me just get all my lesbian friends together and here's some tools and white claw and just we hide <laughs> this body I am also sober I do not drink anymore um, probably for the best because I would probably do you shit know, like this yeah drink a couple cases of the clammies You're and like, I'm doing it hide I'm a body going for it Going for that it. is that's fucking. So are they hitmen or lesbians? You do the math. Hey. <laughs> well, at that point, they wouldn't be like the hitmen either. They're just kind of the cleanup crew. So this is an H. H. Holmes question. H. Mm. H. Holmes was America's first like big serial killer, and he would hire people to build, uh, like basically do the same thing, like hide bodies. And they didn't know they were hiding the bodies. They just thought like I'm because he told me to build this stairway going this way. But he hired people to do all his body covering up for him. So, I mean, hey, man, construction workers out there, you never know what you're building, but, uh, you know. Well, there's another (laughs) logistical question I have to ask, because if these construction workers are union, do I need to put out a bid first? Do I need to, like, you know, do I need to put out a bid for contractors? Life is so complicated. And if you pay somebody to kill someone, like, is is, you can't Venmo that. You can't Venmo that, and I'm pretty sure it's not a tax deduction. (laughs) I wish it was. I wish it was. You know, I'd be like, well, I did spend 20 grand on a murder earlier this year. If murder was legal, like, I'm going to run my political platform, (laughs) (laughs) then that could be a tax deductible thing. Okay. All right. Uh, cool. I, that's my cool. part of my political fucking future. Okay, but if you claim it as a tax deduction, let's say you take the tax deduction, um, would that would that disqualify you from any sort of life insurance policy? Probably. That Maybe you, that would be the that's really because that's brilliant. a lot of of income tax break right. kind of situations going on. You know, that might be like the thing like well if you have higher you can or you if get, murder's legal and I have a life insurance policy say on you and I kill you um, do I then have to pay taxes yes. on that life and I do yes okay so it's like you maybe you get one hitman like pass in a lifetime and, and like you know that you don't get taxed on I don't know this is but also if murder is legal and I am a professional hitman um, can I f- use my my tax certificate and um, do I do I as an independent contractor as a hitman <laughs> need to have an EIN? Do I get to you know get tax exemptions when I'm making purchases on say yes. like arsenic? You rope, can write duct tape. You write off those barrels. You write off that soylex. You write off the rope. This is just reminding me all the stuff for work I need to write off. It's just like tape measures and shit. Look at how helpful I am. You're so helpful. I am so helpful. In any case, she's not going to get away with it. This Obviously, lady. she, she she's wrote. totally not. But here's what the judge said. Here's what the judge said. She's like, look, um, the jury, high jury, like you can't account any of that essay into this trial. It that's is not good, admissible. It's a good lawyer. Yeah. Well, no, that's the judge. Well. Wow. Are they fucking? Okay. Speaking of fucking, 
I mean, she's in her 70s, so maybe, but like, I don't know. She, <laughs> so she, she's guilty. It's going to be life. She's up for parole, I think, in like 20 or 30 years. She's not going to live that long. She's not going to live that long. Well, no. grandkids will have a fun story. There are no culinary meals in prison. You know, she's going to piss somebody off in there. Like, she went from having like a chef in house. You killed him. Yeah. And you gave bad advice to a lot of women. How many of those other women in lockup? with her she's like ultra karen ultra karen she killed the help she killed the help but also like oh my god i read your essay and i tried to kill my husband because i hired a hitman and, and it didn't work and it's your fault i'm here stab stab okay we have i think yeah we're gonna end the episode soon uh, uh anyone that's still listening thank you hi thank you hey hi if you want to check us out outside of here uh you can check me out on social media uh, Adrian M. Cuss, K U S S. Or you can check me out uh, Facebook and Instagram, give your hair a kiss. You can uh, <laughs> okay. head on over to the YouTube and check out, give your hair a kiss. Or you could check out my website and uh, book an appointment with me in New York City and get your hair did. She thought, give your hair a kiss at the kissing booth. Uh huh. I'm, I'm just, I have a show every Thursday at the tiny cupboard at 7 p.m. It's called the Traumedy Hour, and it's a safe place for dark comedy. And trauma. And trauma. Bring um, your trauma, I leave with new trauma. I'm sorry, but I think I gave our listeners the wrong impression of me this episode. They all think I'm a murderous killer, um, and I've, I've actually... I kind of like that a little bit. Like, been, I'm a little afraid of you I've now. Been through it's, a lot it's of, kinda... I've been through a lot of sexual trauma and, like, rapes and stuff that, like, are, like, I like to talk about because, uh, like, I can make fun of them now. <laughs> But I'd like to consider this a spa- uh, uh, safe space for murderous talk- fantasies, murderous fantasies, and rape stories, and ill humor. Yeah, and it's it's dark humor is our coping mechanism. It is how we have uh, dealt with the sexual assaults in our lives, and with all the bad shit and the trauma and the mommy issues and, I think, and the nonsense. I think rape jokes are positive. They're a good thing. Yeah, it's just owning your experience. This girl had an experience. This girl had so an experience. So we, we want to review this porn. Um, Coming we, back around to alien murder beef sex. goodness. Th- so what's going on here? I see animation. So we got a little lamin- Wait, it, an- 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 animation. We can't. Um, it's entitled Hentai Girl Gets Impregnated. By eggs. By eggs. Okay, so it's it's live action and there's... Oh, the egg's not animated? I, th- I think this is... This Press is play. animated. We're going to play it. We're going to do this. No sound. No sound. Oh, fucking. Don't you hate the porn ads? I hate porn ads. And Look, she's just, I can't even see what's going well, on here. I want you to click on it. But most. That doesn't have me sold. No, her, her tits are really badly done, too. I don't like her eyelashes. Her t- We're such fucking gay men. <laughs> 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 Look at her tits. Like, how can I? Oh, skip ad. There, there you we go. go. What? Haven't you ever watched porn? <laughs> I don't think about I don't think about the ads. I hate you know the ads they're like Benny Hill Wait cartoons now. What, like, what is happening? Shit. They don't have it. Oh. Oh, what a sad way to end a No, we're not done yet. Oh, okay. we're not done yet? Well look, we we had a little bit of a technical difficulty. Pornhub kinda let us Pornhub let us Pornhub let us down. They let us down today. right now. I was so stoked on that. So let's just thumbnail. see let's, oh, this this is a crazy thumbnail. Hit me with a crazy thumbnail. Real life hentai incredible elf. Elias Stark masturbates, ejects eggs, and spreads milk everywhere. Oh, I glossed over that one. That one also looked really fun and exciting. I'm here for it. Oh, hentied. hentied. Good logo. She's we need a, a logo time. that good. Oh, she's got elf ears. This is complete cosplay. She's already lacked. She's lacked. This is a preview. Oh. This is so, like. Well, why are they showing us the best parts right at the beginning then? Oh, this is like. Oh, it's a quick a video. No, 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 no. Let like... it, let her roll, let her roll, because I can, I can talk about this. For oh, quick. wow, that's a lie. But it, well, what came in her to make? That's not like maybe it's the milk from her tits. Maybe she just like <laughs> squirted, like turkey bastered it up there. That was interesting. Hentai.com. That was maybe the greatest ad I've seen. My critique is going to be, um, she needs. A little bit of powder in that wig. It's a little shiny. <laughs> I don't believe it. It's um, not a lace front. I can see her hairline. Uh, good character work on the makeup, but um, excellent. I'm just not work. there. My favorite porn right now is Lola Taylor gangbangs. Ooh, you were telling me about the gangbangs. I love Lola Taylor. She is 
like some people are just born to do what they do. She is born to take multiple cocks at once. She even it's like the, the cream pies in her ass, like one after another. I don't know what's wrong with me, but that's just what I'm into. Does like, she have a record? Like what is what is her her top she, body count like in a video? Oh like how many guys will she get? Twenty, in one thirty, twenty in one gangbang. I hope she's hydrated. She looks very. Is she is she sponsored by like she, Smart Water? Or, like, <laughs> I'm just curious because that seems like a whole. Yeah, like a thing that could happen in the industry. Why aren't water companies? Does Gatorade sponsor just athletes, or do they also sponsor porn? I mean, acquiring my nuts. Nothing. I think that Gatorade should get in on the porn game. I don't know. Electric, like, like I'm sure smart Gatorade water. Gatorade porn. Uh, yeah. You know. anyway. Do you just get like those big, you know, the yellow, not yellow. That color is orange. You know, Gatorade things from the games, and you're just dumping it on each tell, other. Tell me that fucking... she's not born to do this. Well, you can't see it, her face. Like she's really cute, but like she's chilling on it though. Oh, she's. I think she's on a ton of Xanax, but it's good for it's good. What I've, is going on with his nipple? <laughs> it's winking at us. It's like he's got like a third eye. I love how like they're they're kind of almost like arguing because they're holding her up and they're they're staying on either side. Everyone guy has a d- dick in her pussy, one's in her ass, and like they're kind of like, "Are you cool, bro? Are you good? Or, oh, you I good? lost it. Are you, you get it?" But they can't say any of that. It's a lot of really subtle nonverbal communication between it the men. Is and I really respect that. It's like it's it's like dancing partners. It is like dancing partners. It's it's like. I, he's just a team player. There's so many team players in this keeping orgy. Keeping it warmed up, keeping it ready to go. Yeah, but like she's just her facial expressions are great. But she's you know she's not a dead fish. But like she's not a dead fish. But she's chilling on it. She, I mean, you know, she can't give it all away right at the beginning. No. She's got a long way to go. And long it, way to go. And look at that look she always gives. She always gives this like sad look. Like, <gasps> is it going to be okay? Like, is that her? It's character. Her like let's go consent face. It's it's character work. Like you're here. Mm. Yes, it's Lolita. Lolita shit. Yeah, I do see the Lolita up here. Yeah. 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 But she's chilling on it, and she's adorable. She's adorable. I think she should have been like, I don't mean, I shouldn't say that. Anyway, she should, I could see her having been like a child actor because she has a very cute face. You say that while she's getting. (laughs) I know. Oh, look at like Chad over here. Yeah, he's just chilling. He's like, I I don't have as much experience as the black dick, so I'm just going to hang out and do my own thing. What is this porn called? Like armband gangbang? It's Lola Taylor. Everybody's got an armband tattoo. Oh, they do? (laughs) I feel like I'm just, it could be just like a 90s late night commercial. Maybe. Um, Yeah. No. Mm -mm. I mean, I was a kid in Germany. Like, you know. (laughs) It was different. Yeah. Yeah, there's just, I think that's why I'm just so adjusted to porn. I'm like, it was just, mm. My mom was uh, everywhere. oddly open sexually, but not about anything else. And she loves shoving sex down people's throats. Is that, an, is that another, like, narcissist trait? Because my mother was the same way. Yeah, I, I would say a thousand percent. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mm. And we've all learned something. We all learned something and today. We've, we've all grown. You, me, and Miss Taylor welcome, have all grown welcome, today. Thank, thank you for coming on the ride of the Alien Murder Sex After School Special. <laughs> <laughs> it's been wonderful getting to know you all and getting you. to know our... T- I love his tan line. This guy, <laughs> this guy who's going in for the win on the Vodge just has the cutest Speedo tan line. And look at this little tennis bracelet he's got. Oh, it's somebody that cares about him gave that to him. I'm very detail oriented. No, I, that's why watching porn with you is Do fun. Do you think it was somebody else in the room that gave him that? No. Mm. I think it's a girl that thinks they're in a relationship. Maybe it was his grandmother's. Maybe it was. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. I'm Lauren Petrie. I'm at the Lauren Petrie on Instagram. And come check my show at the Tiny Cupboard uh, last Thursday of every month, 7 p.m. You can just Google my name, Lauren, L E U R Y N, Petrie. And uh, find out all my my stuff, my comedy shit. You can uh, email me if you want to be mad at me if I offended you, or and I'll read it on the air. So, <laughs> and I am Adrian Cuss, and some of you call me Kiss, and you can check me out at Give Your Hair a Kiss, Give Your Hair a Kiss, Give Your Hair a Kiss on the YouTube, the Instagram, the Facebook, 
and the dot com. We'll eventually have a website for this podcast. We will. We will. Yeah. It's coming much like every guy in this video. Love the handprints. They are taking all way over too her. Long. Uh, also, please check out my band. We are Bed Pan Fight, Fight. and we are a. Um, if you've ever thought about motorboating your friend's mom, what? give us a listen. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> this has been a great first episode, and we look forward to hearing from you guys, and we will catch you... Later. Later on Alien, Alien Murder, Murder Sex. Sex.